Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to make an application with a drag and drop widget inside of it. The basic concept behind this widget is that we want to be able to basically drag it around and then when we drag it to our target it will then transfer its color from the item to this target. We will accomplish this by making use of a lot of things that we've already sort of gone over in the animation tutorials and then a few things that we haven't really looked at yet. All right, so let's build out our app skeleton. The basic skeleton of our app will be a material app with a scaffold inside of it that points towards an object called app and this app object will be the field where all of our items will exist. So then we'll create our app class and of course we want this to extend stateful widget and then we'll create a class called app state that extends the state of the app. We want to create a global variable called cot color and this will be the color that we'll use to essentially catch the color of our draggable object and put it into our draggable target. We can default our cot color to colors.gray and then we can override our build function. This build function will return what is called a stack. Now a stack is a layout element and it allows us to essentially line up positioned elements based on the sides of this box. So you can think of it like a huge box and we can choose two sides and then we can then align a item with those two sides. So for instance, if we were to choose left and top, then we can make it so that the item was say 50 pixels from the left and 50 pixels down from the top. We could choose right and bottom or we could choose right and left and so on and so forth. And like with most other layout elements, we can have multiple different children inside of our stack. Okay, so that's all we want to do for this particular class for now. Let's build out our draggable objects. Our drag box will extend stateful widget and then we want to have three final values or properties. We'll have an offset which will be our initial position. Then we'll have a string which will be our label. This will be like a string that will sit on top of this item. And then we'll have the item's color which we'll just call item color. And then of course we need to get the constructor and put all of these inside of it. And then we want to override our create state function and we'll create a class called drag box state and this will contain the state for our drag box. We want to add an offset to this class and we'll call this position. This offset will hold the position of the item. This is not just the initial position and we'll set this equal to 0.0, .0 and 0.0, .0 by default. So the x and y values will be 0.0. .0. So it will sit up in the top left corner. We can then get the init position offset from our drag box widget by calling widget.initPosition and setting this equal to position inside of the init state function inside of our drag box state class. And this will make it so that the item will sit in wherever we initialize the position at. We'll then override our build function and for this we want to return a positioned widget. As I mentioned before, a positioned widget allows us to essentially position a child element on our stack. So because we're putting everything inside of a stack widget, we need to create a series of positioned widgets so that they can be positioned around our stack. And inside of this position, we'll, we'll use the left and the top. And we'll say left will be based on our position.dx and top will be based on our position.dy. So based on the offset, we will then move our item in relation to our left and our top axis. We then want to create the child for this position, which will be our draggable element. A draggable element is a widget that we can drag onto what's called a drag target. And we'll talk about the drag target when we get to it in a bit. We want to set up the data for this draggable and the data for this draggable is the actual item that we're dropping from the draggable onto the drag target. So this could be anything from like a string to a color to maybe even like a route or a position just various other things. In our case, we're going to be dropping our color. So we want to get our widget.itemColor and put this into our data property. The child of this draggable will be the actual item that we're dragging around. So this will be a container. We'll give our container a width and a height of 100. Then we'll give it a color of widget item color. Then we'll give it a child, which will be a center, and then a child inside of that, which will be a text. This will take our widget.label 
and put it inside of it. And then this widget that label will have a style, text style. We'll give it a color, which will be colors white. Its decoration will be text decoration dot none. And then the font size will be 20 by default. Now we have various functions that we can fill out for our draggable. We have on drag completed, on draggable canceled, and on drag started. We specifically want to fill out on draggable canceled so that we can move our item around without it bouncing back to the old position. This function takes in the velocity and the offset of the item. And we can call the set state function in here so that we can then set the position equal to the offset. So when the user drops the draggable, it will then reset the position's position to this position. So position dx and position dy. We also want to set up what's called a feedback. Now feedback is what the widget looks like when it's being dragged around. So all I've done right now is just copied our original child and pasted it into the feedback property. So it's just a container with a width and height that's 100 the same color, same child, and the text and everything is all the same. And we can manipulate it so that it will look different. For instance, we can give it opacity and we can change the color and things like that. So we want the color on this item to call with opacity, which will change the opacity. And we'll give it a 0.5 so that it will then be 50% lighter than our other item. We can also make our width and height slightly larger. So they'll become 120 by 120 rather than 100 by 100. So when the user picks this up, the item will just get larger slightly. And we can also decrease the font size. So when the user picks up this item, the font size actually gets smaller. All right, so now let's take our drag boxes and instantiate them inside of our stack. And then we'll take a look at what they look like inside of our application. So we can create two drag box. I'll give this first one an offset of 0.0, .0 and 0.0, .0, so it'll be in the top left corner. We'll give it a label of box one, and then a color of lime. And then I'll give the second one an offset of 100 and 0.0, .0 so it'll be sort of in the middle and the top. It'll have a label of box two, and then the colors will be colors.orange. And now let's run this and take a look at it in our emulator. So here are two boxes. If I pick up one, you can see there's sort of a ghost. And if I let it go, it actually drops on the position where I let it go. I can do the same for box two. If I let it go, again, they get larger and then they get smaller. And so this is pretty nice, but we have nothing to actually drop these in yet. And we can create a third box if we want. I just copied box two and then changed the offset slightly. And you can see now it's sort of pushed off farther to the right. And of course we can pick it up just like the other boxes as well. All right, so now let's make our drag target. And I'll reset the offset to 200 and 0, 0.0. And then underneath of our drag box, we'll put a positioned. And inside of this position, we will have the item that we'll be able to drag our drag boxes to. Our position will be based on the left and the bottom, and we'll have it be 100 by 0.0, .0. and inside of it we'll have our drag target. Our drag target has what's called a builder, and this was what builds the widget, and we put in the build context, and then we have two lists, and each of the lists has a name. One is the rejected, and the other one is the accepted, and these lists represent the widgets that get accepted when they get dragged into the actual drag target, and the items that are rejected when they get dragged into the drag target. Instead of our drag target, we'll create a container, in this container, we'll give it a width and height of 200, and then we'll give it a decoration with a color that is based on whether or not there's something inside of the list accepted. If there's nothing inside of our list accepted, then we color this with our gray shade. Otherwise, we color it with the cot color. We can then give our drag target an unaccepted function, and this function will fire when it accepts a item. So when the box gets dropped into it and it determines that that box is something that should be accepted inside of it, it will then change the color to our cut color based on the color of the box. We can then give this a center and a text that just says drag here. And this will just then make it a box that just says drag here. And then when we drag our item onto it, we can just change its color. Okay, so here's our application. You can see we have three boxes at the top because I put in a third box. Box one is at zero, zero. 
box 2 is at 200, 0, 0, and then the box 3 is at 300, 0, 0. If we take box 1, which is blue, we can drag it anywhere in the white box here. But if we take it and we try to drag it over our drag target, you can see that it changes from a dark gray to a lighter gray. And then when we let go, it changes colors entirely to an actual blue color. And we can do the same with the green and with the orange. So we can change the color of the box based on the box that we drag into our drag target. And of course each of our draggables has the text on it and then our drag target also has text on it as well and it says drag here. Anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the box below and if you disliked it then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.